All right, this is our trainer that we're going to be using for doing our electrical installation lab. Um, one thing I want to uh, point out first of all is uh, we're going to be installing an electrical cable in this transmitter here, installing some cables right down here, and then doing a mock-up junction box over here. So we're running some armored cable down over to this junction box, terminating it here, terminating it there. Uh, this lab, the purpose of the lab is to give you some experience with an electrical installation, but by all means it is uh, very important to make sure that uh, that after the installation is done it is approved and checked by an electrician, a certified electrician. Um, some facilities may do things slightly different than I do in this video, but this is uh, this video, the purpose of this is to uh, show the students how to uh, install an armored tech cable and um, so then they complete their they can they can then complete their lab all right so this is the beginning of our electrical installation here uh, we have some uni strip mounted pre-mounted on this uh, plywood board here and here we're going to be mounting some cable tray down here and then kind of a little mock-up uh, junction box to run our cable from our transmitter down through our cable tray over to that junction box we're going to be using these spring nuts that we're going to be placing into the uni strut. So I'll go ahead and put some of those in. You can see they've got a spring on the back and they just kind of they push in, push in, and then turn. Just like that. So we're going to need two here, two here, and one up, one up here, and one right here. All right, our bolts are going to go through these two square holes and they should line up with our spring nuts that I've installed. Uh, we're going to do that here and then also over on the other side as well. So you can see there's our two spring nuts on this side and there's our two spring nuts on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and install those bolts and get the cable tray mounted and level. All right, I have our bolts and washers put it into our spring nuts. Uh, now I'm just going to use a number, number three, a number three uh, Robertson screwdriver to tighten those up. Right there, the cable tray is mounted, and you can see I've got the level on it, and it appears to be level. Um, next step will be to mount the little mock-up junction box that we're going to run our cable over to. All right, so here's that little mock-up junction box. We pull off the Panduit cover here to access uh, one of the holes that we're going to use to bolt to that uni strut, and then there's so there's the two holes. So I'm going to put spring nuts in these two and then uh, bolt it on. All right, there we have the mock-up junction box mounted and it also is level. Is I've got two, two uh, tech connectors here uh, that are used for a cable. One needs to go into our transmitter and one needs to go over here into our um, kind of our mock-up of the electrical junction box where our cable would run to. So first I'll install the tech connector for the cable you can see uh, right here on the end we've got, this is a half inch MPT thread, just threads right in. So I'll go ahead and thread that in. And then we'll be using these slip joint pliers right here, i just set them here on top of the cable tray. I'm using these to tighten the tech connector in. So if I just put these on and tighten it into place. Make sure it's good and snug. And so yeah, the reason why these are called slip joint pliers is you can see that they are adjustable uh, for bigger and smaller tech connectors. And over here on the other end, we'll just be, we've got a uh, lock nut here that we're going to be threading, lock nut or bushing that we're going to be threading onto the other tech, tech connector and then once it's fairly t snug hand tight we can tighten the bottom up and then use the slip joint pliers down here as well all right so the cable is going to get entered into the transmitter we'll do the transmitter first doesn't really matter which end we do first but you can pick and choose one just take the cap off here and you can see right inside there are two terminals we're going to be connecting to. We're going to be connecting to the power, the plus and the minus here on the power and running these out to the other end. Um, so what we'll do first is just have a look here. We want to make sure that we have enough cable. So um, we'll probably start, you can usually just mark it with the thumb 
you can see right here, this is probably where we're gonna have to strip back most of this gray rubber or gray jacket that's on the uh, on the tech cable. All right, another thing I wanted to point out on these uh, connectors here, the tech connectors for the, the armored cable, um, you can see right there it says 0 .600 to 0.760, and that's the diameter of our armored cable that this connector is good for. So um, this is probably a pretty common common uh, connector. The let's see if it has the uh, uh, an STO50-464 uh, connector um, be pretty commonly used with instrument cable. Um, which is this gray cable here. It's got the shield and everything in it. Um, and if we take a look here, uh, it is approximately 5 eighths of an inch, which uh, would be about 0.625. So this cable is uh, big enough for this connector, and that's important to note because if we try to put too big of a cable or too small of a cable in there, the uh, the uh, fitting won't clamp down on the cable properly, and you could have a leak or issues with the armor being grounded. All right, so now I've got the uh, cable over here on the workbench, and uh, let's slip my other cut-proof glove on. So I've got cut-proof gloves on. I just double-checked this before I left. My thumb's in the right spot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the utility knife and cut this right open and then cut around either side here to uh, get this gray uh, jacket off the tech cable. And then it should just kind of pop open like this. And if we just take the knife, and then it should just kind of peel off like that. All right, so I have the tech connector, one of the tech connectors here uh, opened up. You can see inside of it, um, there's uh, this little metal ground bushing. I think, let's see if I can just pull it out. So I have it removed. This here is gonna go around the armor of our cable. And the, so the armor being this part right here. And then the rubber uh, I guess grommet or rubber sealing ring right here. It is going to be back over here. It's going to seal on the outer gray jacket here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a notch somewhere around here in our uh, armor on our tech cable. When we cut that notch, the remainder of this will pull off. So I will uh, grab a hacksaw and cut that notch. All right. So this is quite often the practice used for cutting and holding the cable. Um, just by kind of holding it between your legs and then placing the hacksaw just like this and then using your other hand to hold the top here while you use another hand to cut the notch in the cable. All right, so there you can see I've cut a notch in the armor with the hacksaw. And now to remove it, we should just be able to twist and pull it off and our um, armor then just slides right off. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is we want to make sure that we don't cut too deep here. We don't want to have any um, nicks or anything in this rubber jacket. And when you are cutting with the hacksaw, um, the way that the blade should be in installed is that when you push down, or when you push forward, sorry, you push down and the teeth will cut. And then when you pull back, you don't need to apply that pressure. Alright, so the next step is uh, stripping back the black jacket that we've exposed underneath the armor. Um, you can see right here the armor is going to bottom out to about there in the fitting and then when we thread this in it'll clamp that metal uh, ground ring onto the armored cable. The, the rubber grommet will push the ring down and then it will pinch onto this cable to, to uh, ground the armor. Um, the next thing, um, so yes, the next thing we need to mark here is approximately where we want to strip this rubber back to. And in normal practice, it's good to, to leave rubber up to probably, I don't know, somewhere 
where it just comes into the transmitter head so we'll probably be sorry we'll probably be stripping it back to about here um, so I'll take you over to the bench and we'll do that. There's a couple things I wanted to highlight here I just stripped back about an inch of that black jacket here and you can see over here on the right there's a fuzzy little cord that's called the rip cord and so once that's exposed then you can tug on that and it will actually rip the rest of the jacket back depending on your cable and our cable is pretty short it might actually just by pulling on it, it could possibly even pull the rip cord out uh, so depending on how easy it is we can first attempt to try to use the rip cord to rip it back if not we just need to be careful if we are using utility knife stripping this back that we don't nick any of the wires up here um, of course removing their insulation because then it could cause a short in the electrical wiring uh, the other things I wanted to point out is there's this there's this foil right here you can see it's kind of wrapping the white and the black wire here um, that's used for uh, magnetic interference and what we do is on one end of the cable there's this this uh, bare wire it's called the drain and it touches this shield this foil shield the whole way through the cable and we want to ground that at one end only and one end only so on this end we won't do the grounding on the other end we will because that's typically where it's done is in the control room and that then drains off any noise that may occur um, so I wanted to talk about that and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and attempt to use the rip cord here and if that doesn't work I'm going to have to use the utility knife to then run this back to where I'd marked it with my thumb. Right so here you can see uh, everything exposed a little bit better now the rip cord the shield or the foil that I talked about and that drain that bare drain wire and then the two conductors inside this cable and here's the um, the black jacket that I have removed uh, so what my next step is going to be to do is to uh, strip back um, some of the wires here so then they can be terminated in the transmitter head, that blue transmitter head. Alright, so here's the uh, wire strippers I'm going to use for stripping back those wires. If you look close, I'll just let, let it focus here. Note it says to cut copper only. Um, steel and stuff like that will damage these cutters. And if you look here, there's a scale here for American wire gauge. It's different sizes of wire. Uh, we can go from 10 to 20 and this is for solid you can see AWG solid and then hopefully you can see it over here on the other side it should say AWG stranded so you can see the scale is different here 12 to 22 so depending on what we're working with today we're working with uh, I don't know if you can really tell it is a uh, stranded wire it's hard to probably see here but once we get it stripped back you'll see that it's stranded this is American wire gauge it should be American wire gauge um, or AWG 18 so we'll use that hole and we use the strippers here to strip that all right so you can see I have it in the slot for American wire gauge 18 um, so I'm just gonna close these down and then pull the strippers forward and it'll pop the, um, the the jacket off the wire and there now you can see that I've uh, I've pulled it off here it's left right there and you can see the bare wire and you can see that it's stranded here by if I just pull on this a little bit you can see that there'll be individual strands you can see there's one individual strand of the wire if it was solid wire we wouldn't have those individual strands it would be all solid all right so I have both conductors uh, stripped back now you can see here I've ripped off the jacket on both of them and I'm gonna pull the shield off now here uh, this this foil because uh, we won't need that and um, one other thing I wanted to point out uh, the stranded the purpose of the stranded wire here makes it a little bit more flexible it's easier to bend or right, you can see I've got the foil removed the rip cord removed I did have to cut a little nick in the foil to get it started with my uh, utility knife so I put on my cut resistant cut resistant gloves and then uh, just cut a little nick here in the uh, foil so then I could just tear it around uh, the edge here you can see. Alright and the last thing we're going to do here before we enter this cable into the transmitter is we're going to take this drain wire here and we're going to kind of wrap it around the conductors and then cover it with tape. We won't be using it uh, so, but it's kind of good practice just to tape it back so if we do need to use it in the future it is available. So there you can see now that I've wrapped that drain wire around the two conductors and I'm going to grab some tape and put some tape over that just to prevent it from uh, touching the, the housing of the transmitter and grounding out. Electrical tape just to tape this uh, drain wire up and cover it uh, so when we go to enter it into the transmitter head uh, it's not touching anything. So I have installed some labels on each conductor here 
I uh, used a label maker and a heat shrink gun. I'll do a quick demo on just how I did that here. All right, I've made a label here for one of the conductors. Uh, I've just got it slid on here. I'm gonna print another one here just to show you how to do that with our Brady label maker. Uh, you can see here's the label that I put on. I'm just going to clear that and replace that two with a one. And we're gonna print a label. So press the print button right here. And you can see the label's coming out at the end here. And there's a little label, there's a little cutter button here we push. And that'll then allow me to pull the label out. So now you can see we have our second label and it's going to go onto the, the white conductor there. Okay, so we're gonna use this heat gun right here to warm up these uh, labels that we're putting on our conductors and they will then shrink down onto the wire. So when we're doing it, we're gonna to wanna to make some fairly quick back and forth motions and probably hold the heat gun, I would say, I don't know, probably about two inches off of the uh, label and then you'll see it shrink down. If you hold it too long, it'll start to turn brown and burn. So we want to be kind of quick with it, and it doesn't take long for that heat gun to heat up. Okay, so there, that's the finished product. You can see that the labels have shrunk down, and they're secured onto the conductors. Okay, here you can see I'm just going to be feeding the tech cable into the tech connector there. You can see my wires have made it through into the housing over here. Um, so I'm going to use both hands now just to kind of feed it on through. Okay, so I've connected the uh, screws here. I've backed these screw terminals out here and uh, my white wire is going to the positive of the power and my black wire is going to the negative. That's how we're gonna be doing it in the lab. And so use this terminating screw, screwdriver to do that. I had to back these screws out first and then I was able to stick the bare wires in and then screwing the wire, the screws back down, the um, washer type, square washer um, on the electrical connection then uh, uh, held the bare wire in place. I also used my slip joint pliers right here to tighten the tech connector in. So you can see there's a lot less threads now exposed here. And you can see that the cable is now, that, that rubber gland is now squished down on the cable and, and sealing it, preventing any water or anything like that from getting in. Here's our labels installed on our transmitter end here. One dash four dash one dash one for the white cable and one dash four dash one dash two for the black cable. Black cable going to the negative, white cable going to the positive. We want to just make sure that when we are um, putting the cover back on that it's not going to rub on the wires and the wires aren't going to get pinched in the threads here for the transmitter head. Alright so in this step we're going to cut off the excess cable. You can see here we got our cable is going to run down. It's going to then be, we're going to strap it here in the cable tray and then we're going to, and then it's going to come up and go into the tech connector here and we're going to pull the covers off these panduit here. These are kind of for good housekeeping inside the electrical cabinet. They guide your cables inside an electrical cabinet. Um, so we're going to have uh, the cable run up and in and we're going to have to strip back all the armor and stuff like we did over here. And then that black jacket we're going to run right up to here and then strip that off and run the conductors right into our terminal strip right here. So what we're going to have to do first is kind of estimate how much cable we're going to need. So a good guide is just to kind of hold the cable up here and get an idea of how much cable you're going to need to run all the way down to down to here, right? So we're going to hold the we're going to we're gonna then cut the cable with the hacksaw and then repeat the process again. Okay, so now I have completed the installation of the other end here. Uh, things to point out, you can see I left the black jacket on all the way up to about here uh, to where we needed to separate each conductor. I put labels on each conductor that correspond to the labels over in the transmitter. Um, I've removed the shield foil. I've ran the drain wire down to this green and yellow terminal which represents ground. This terminal is then connected to this DIN rail at the back here. Um, so this would then need to be grounded by an electrician to ensure that any magnetic interference that gets onto that foil, that shield that's protecting the two conductors from interference, gets drained out this drain wire to ground. Um, one other thing that I may not have had in my other videos was this grounding lug here on this tech connector. Uh, this also, you can see there's this screw here for clamping down onto a cable. Uh, this is also, this also should be ran 
uh, by an electrician uh, to ground. So then we ensure that if any interference gets onto the armor of this cable here or these tech connectors, if uh, what could happen is it could induce a potential a voltage on the, the connector or the, the armor. And so if someone came up and touched this, um, it could actually give you a shock. So by grounding it here, um, that ensures that it's at equal potential to ground. So when you touch this, it doesn't flow through your body down to ground. Um, just wanted to point out those things. Um, I'll go ahead and put the covers back on the Panduit here to kind of show the finished installation. There, so now I have the covers back on the Panduit and it kind of hides all the wiring now and you can see that we can still see both the labels for both conductors. So if we ever do need to look at a drawing and there could be 30 different cables running into a cabinet per se, and you can easily then identify uh, which wires are which. Uh, if you do need to do any troubleshooting. Okay, for our last step here for uh, this cable installation, you can see we have it entered over here in our mock-up junction box in the control room, and then we also have it connected into our transmitter head. Uh, the last step to do is to um, uh, strap it to our cable tray. So I have, here's a tie wrap or zip tie. Uh, you can see uh, inside of the head here, it's got a little kind of notch uh, when you when you uh, put one end th through there, that notch will grab, there's um, kind of almost some small teeth here that it will grab on. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll just pull that up. And you can see here that it is tightened up and it's holding the uh, armored cable, the tech cable into place. Um, so once it's fairly snug, then we can go ahead and cut this excess off. So kind of the best practice is to kind of take, um, I guess, electric, electric, an electrical tool, a Lyman, Lyman pliers or slip joint, joint pliers, and just to kind of clamp down on the end and twist it until uh, it breaks off. So there, just like that. And what that prevents is uh, from any sharp edges. Uh, sometimes cutting it up a little too high will make some sharp edges, so if someone's running their finger across here. Uh, they can end up cutting themselves. So by doing it that way, by twisting it off like that, it prevents a sharp edge. All right, so my last step here, I wanted to just demonstrate the operation of this device that we just wired up. So this over here is our pressure transmitter. Um, the electrical connections go down over, and we terminated them over here on this terminal strip. What I've added here is a unarmored, this is a, a cable that's not armored, but it still has a shield and two conductors in it, and it's coming down over here and it's connected into a 24 volt power supply. So this transmitter needs 24 volts DC uh, to be powered. I've hooked a current meter in series and right now it's reading 4 milliamps you can see. So what this transmitter will output is a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. 4 being zero pressure and as I go and increase this regulator over here on the side, you're gonna see this regulator, I'm gonna turn it, you're gonna see the pressure increase, and we're gonna be outputting air pressure out this white line here, up into the bottom of the transmitter right here. So it's gonna sense pressure in here, and then send a four to 20 milliamp signal out on this cable here. And we're going to read that four to 20 milliamp signal right here. So if you just watch here, watch the pressure gauge go up, and you can see also the milliamp signal on the meter is going up. I'm going to stop at 50, 50 PSI, about halfway up the gauge here, and you can see we're at 12 milliamps. Well, 12 milliamps is halfway from 4 to 20. So this pressure transmitter is likely calibrated for 0 to 100 PSI. And everything is wired correctly because it is functioning properly. It's outputting its 4 to 20 milliamp signal. If there was a loose wire or loose connection, we'd probably be reading zero milliamps on that meter. So I did want to throw a little bit of troubleshooting in here as well. I just wanted to demonstrate what this meter would read if we had an open circuit, if one of the wires wasn't connected, maybe one of the screw terminals here, we didn't tighten down uh, good enough, or there was a loose wire, or it wasn't uh, inserted all the way, or it was clamping down on the jacket instead of the, the bare wire, uh, giving an a open circuit. We'll demonstrate that by just opening up here, I'll just loosen, make demonstrate a circuit there, and you can see now the meter reads zero milliamps. If I put it back on, it goes back to four milliamps, and we have zero pressure on our gauge right now. 
All right, so once we're all done, we should remove the mock-up junction box, the cable tray, and all the uh, tech connectors you can see from the transmitter and have the cover back on the transmitter. Uh, so all that stuff I just placed right here. We've got our cable tray, uh, mock-up junction box, tech connectors, uh, the lug here for the tech connector down there, and then all of our spring nuts and bolts and washers that we use for mounting everything on the, uh, on the uni strut there. And then take our tech cable, cut the ends off so it can't be reused um, by another group. We want to make sure that everyone does this installation on their own and uh, have your instructor verify before leaving.